battlers and girls that PvP. The seven round Mega Cup, the Paris Battle Tower, was swept by a 13 year old. Welcome back again here to the Ghost Stadium. Today's episode, again, is very special. I do believe that we have another kid prodigy in Pokemon Go PvP on our hands here. I will put the tournament link right down there in the description below so you can take a look at it as well. But to take a brief glance here before we get into the matches, I'm, I'm really not sure how to say the name. I think it's Mikalaya. I'll just say Mikal. But again, Mikal here did end up taking a 7-0 sweep in this tournament and from what you can see here if you're wondering what a kid prodigy 7 and 0 rose cup battle tower sweep in paris looks like it is probo pass alolan marowak lick licky golbat medicham and then wigglytuff and let's just go ahead and start looking at these matches and to start off here with round one, you'll see the teams up there. For the rounds, I did not receive the battles in any particular order. I don't think that's too important. But getting into game one here, I would anticipate against Zizzy's line that we see a lot of play with the uh, the Lick Licky, but it looks like he opens up with the Golbat into the Alolan Marowak. Um, kind of an even matchup for the most part, save for the Alolan Marowak definitely wants to land the Shadow Ball, right? Because being part flying type, um, even being part poison type, it's not going to be taking super effective or neutral from Bone Club. It will still resist it because flying has immunity to ground type attacks. But it looks like the Golbat lands the Shadow Ball into the Alolan Marowak. Out comes the Probo Pass. And we see from Macal here a very quick response with the timing on that swap to answer with the Probo Pass Mirror. The Magnet Bombs are going to land. We're pretty familiar with this matchup. Um, just go straight for Magnet Bomb. Now, early on, I am paying more attention this time. It looks like Mikal is opting to run a Spark Probo Pass, and it looks like Zizzy um, is opting for a Rock Throw Probo Pass. So, you know, assuredly, the Spark Probo Pass is going to be favored in the mirror just because of energy efficiency. And Zizzy opts to bring in Gligar at this point, which if it lands a dig, would be a very, very threatening to the Probo Pass. But here we go. Out comes Mikal's Lick Licky. I think we might see this a lot throughout these rounds, but the Lick Licky is going to be able to tank a lot of hits from a lot of different Pokemon, you know, especially consider the uh, the Medicham matchup, right? Um, if they are not running a fighting type charge move, whether that be Power Up Punch or Dynamic Punch, the matchup against the Lick Licky is going to be not as ideal, of course. So um, the Gligar is super low on health. We do not shield the Night Slash. We're able to spark down with the Probo. And then at this point, that is pretty much GG's for game one and round one. That goes to Mikal. All right, and getting into round two here. It'll be interesting to see what Mikal decides to lead with. Um, there, okay. <laughs> Looks like Mikal actually opted to lead with the Lick Licky this time, but Zizzy went a little, little aggressive and they open up with the Cliff Fable. Okay, so we swap in with the Alolan Marowak and... This matchup too, it's kind of um, interesting because the charm damage just chunks away, even being resisted into the Lola Marowak, it will deal heavy damage, heavy damage like fairly quickly. It would surprise you, even being resisted by the Alolan Marowak, that damage output is just, it's it's massive and it comes quick from the uh, Cliff Fable. So looks like they opt to bring out their Gligar at this point, that Night Slash will be super effective into the AWAC but uh, Mikal decides to not shield. They let the AWAC go down and they come back in again with the Lick Lickies. So this is kind of a, a disadvantage to running a Gligar over Gliscor is Dig is not even really comparable for efficiency or damage to uh, Earthquake, which Gliscor has access to and Gligar does not, unfortunately. You know, but still, I guess the thing that you get with the Gligar is it'll be a little more tanky, but the, the body slam spam being thrown at the Gligar there, it really can't keep up with the damage even though it's landed a few night slashes it ends up taking out the lick licky um i do believe that um uh, zizzy ended up actually winning this battle which pushes it yes pushes it to game three here so i believe mccall either leads with awac or gold okay it is an awac lead so zizzy opens up with the cliff fable again probably assuming you know since the last game went kind of well for me when i opened with it i'll just do it again but 
Mikal has adapted at this point and answers within Alolan Marowak into the Clefable. But again, like you know, like we've said, that charm damage will come so quickly. I think he might want to throw at this range. He should probably just throw a Bone Club. If he wanted to throw one earlier, I would have anticipated the Shadow Ball. But at this range now, he's able to fire spin down, and he still has quite a bit of energy built up to throw if he needs to throw into the next incoming Pokemon, which he does throw the Shadow Ball into the Gligar. Goes unshielded, so. I'm surprised Zizzy has not used a shield at all at this point because they have two. Now they have shielded a Bone Club and they only have one shield. So uh, Mikal definitely utilized that energy very well. Um, that's really not a matter of skill at this point. It's just the fact that Zizzy decided not to shield the uh, Shadow Ball when it was Shadow Ball. So um, now the Golbat versus the Gligar matchup is kind of interesting as well because the Night Slashes um, can still deal neutral. And again, Gligar is a little tankier than a than a Gliscor would be in the Great League, right? So this is a really interesting matchup, the Lick Licky versus the Probo Pass. And especially considering they have the um, Rock Throw Probo Pass, it's not going to be as spammable with its charge moves, um, which makes Lick Licky more, more offensive in this kind of matchup than it would be otherwise. Because now we can go for this Earthquake, which does not get shielded. That is GG's round one. Yeah, Zizzy definitely should have used a shield in that last matchup. Not sure why they did not, but hey, it is what it is, GG's. Now we will be going into round two here. From what you can see, it's a Wowat, Wowat, Wowat. Wowat has Charizard, Medicham, Sableye, Provo Pass, Gliscor, and then Wigglytuff. I don't know that we'll see quite as much usage from the uh, Lick Licky in this matchup against the comp that Wow brought, but um, this opens kind of interesting too. So we're gonna be throwing the Bone Clubs instantly. I did not catch at this point whether that was Spark or um, a Rock Throw Probo, but it looks like, yeah, that's Spark, okay. So we are able to throw another Bone Club. I would be surprised if we, okay. I was gonna say I would, I would be surprised if they did shield, so <laughs> I guess I'm a little surprised, but they shielded, then swapped in with their um, Gliscor, and then um, Mikal here answers with the uh, Wigglytuff swap, and that charm damage just chunks away so quick into the Gliscor. Again, it's going to be um, glassier than its counterpart Gligar in the Great League, so the uh, charm damage is not ideal at all there. Now, we throw the Play Rough instantly, um, which does not go shielded, of course. The Probo Pass will um, resist, and it will be able to tank hands down, but they do not shield the Magnet Bomb. Okay, so the Wigglytuff is out of the picture, but here's the Lick Licky. I take it back. The Lick Licky comes out. It's going to be able to lick down. Um, it would have, but they swapped into Sableye, so um, Sableyes, I guess, can be a, kind of a good answer, right? Because it will definitely resist the body slams, but if this Earthquake goes and shielded, that Sableye is history. Okay, they do use a shield, um, so it looks like game one is going to end up going to WoW. WoW out? Um, that, yeah, for sure. That is that is a GG's game one. All right, then game two here with Macau versus WoW out. I'm pretty excited to see what Macau's going to do going into game two, considering how game one went. It feels like he kind of relied on the Lick Licky more than he should have. That Sableye matchup is something definitely that you should anticipate if you're going to bring Lick Licky. But Mikal opens with the Lick Licky into the Probo Pass. Again, that is a Spark Probo Pass that WoW is running. So it's going to be a lot more spammable than it would be otherwise with Rock Throw. Now they swap in with the uh, Gliscor. And um, Mikal answers again with the Wigglytuff in this situation. I would anticipate no shield because that should be Night Slash, which obviously, as you can see, is resisted. And then the charm will do massive work. At this point, they do. They should have an Earthquake with the energy they had built up. And what do we see come out next? Okay, so they come straight back in with the Probo Pass. That makes sense. But um, Wigglytuff is able to, you know, kind of do its thing at least a little bit. It's able to get off a play rough, which goes unshielded and it chunks away little by little with the uh, charm damage now interesting so he shielded the magnet bomb with his wiggly tough he swapped out um into the opposing purple pass with with his own i guess this is what he changed in his comp and how he played here for game two and um he should be able to spark down yeah he's able to spark down all the way wow has two shields has not shielded anything um which i guess is good but considering how this matchup has gone so far with the Clefable farm down and this Probo Pass farming down the opposing Probo Pass and just building up energy, now we see a, a swap into Lick Licky, um, which is going to tank the foul play and instantly throws a body slam. Do we get the shield? 
Ah, he shields the body slam. So he should be able to, yes, he earthquakes for the W against the save lay. Well played right here. So game three, Macal and Wow Out. They open up with the Probo Pass. We open up with the Lick Licky. So it's going to be interesting to see if this is going to be a bait situation. Um, we take the Rock Slide. We can probably tank. We definitely should be able to tank one more. And I don't think Probo Pass will be comfortably farming down with uh, with Spark again because Lick Licky is so tanky. Now they shielded the Earthquake. Looks like Mikhail's opting to not use a shield still at this point. The Probo Pass looks like it actually is able to Spark down eventually. So we throw the Body Slam. <laughs> they shielded. Okay, so they shielded the Body Slam. We're 2-0 no shields at this point. We come in with the Golbat, which is not exactly ideal. Um, you definitely want to be investing the shields at this point. But I guess what Macau might be doing is taking advantage of the fact that they have such a big shield advantage that they want to gain an energy advantage with the matchups coming in. Undercharges the Shadow Ball, does not continue to charge it, swaps, uh, does a blind swap, a blind swap into the Wigglytuff, and there is the Medicham. Red, their comp, and how they would play like a book. I do think it was a little aggressive. However, it definitely has paid off because they had Medicham. And what do they have next? Sableye. <laughs> that is a hard GG's. That was very well played. Wow. All right, now getting into a uh, round three here against Hardcore. Um, Hardcore's comp is kind of interesting because as you can see up there, they brought the Rhyperior and the Probo Pass, which I don't think is a bad call. It might give them options. Um, I would assume if I were to face that lineup that that is going to be a Mud Slap Rhyperior. But again, as you look at Macau's lineup, He's been able to play successfully with Lick Lick Lick, with um, Lick Licky, <laughs> with Lick Licky, Golbat, and then Wigglytuff. So he's not really going to be too worried about a Mud Slap Rhyperior, uh, which it looks like the opponent might have anticipated that because they played around with the Marowak and never mind. They they actually brought the Rhyperior. We throw the Earthquake right away, which does go shielded, and that is Mud Slap. So they're able to Mud Slap down the Lick Licky, but we come right in with the Alolan Marowak. We're throwing the Bone Club, which is super effective, but as you can see, Bone Club is just a, it's not really the best move. So even being super effective against a squishier Mon like Rhyperior, it's just not going to do as much as you, you think it would or you think it should, um, which that's fine because now he's been able to take both shields um, and he throws a Bone Club into, was that Wigglytuff? Yeah, Bone Club into Wigglytuff. So Wiggly takes that damage, but now they are switch locked. So this Golbat can basically farm down a little bit without using a shield. Poison Fang, wing attack down, literally wings attack down, and then there is the Shadow Bowl. That was kind of a quick and clean game one, GG's. To game two with Hardcore, do we, I'd be kind of shocked if they bring the Rhyperior again with how game one went. Okay, so they got the lead this time for the most part, right? Alolan Marowak is going to um, resist the charm damage and it looks like we opt for an Alolan Marowak Mirror. They go for the Bone Club, unfortunately. They sh should have had enough for a Shadow Ball at that range, so I think that was a successful bait, which does set back Macau a little bit at this point, but they answer with the Mud Slap Rhyperior. We see it come out again. This might be a Surf. Okay, so Macau actually opts to use a Shield and is going to throw a Bone Club at the Rhyperior. Instead of opting to throw Shadow Ball, it's gonna throw Bone Club, but we are still um, in the switch timer at this point. So maybe, you know, could have gone for Shadow Ball, but that's okay. Um, the Rhyperior throws, oh, it's Rock Wrecker. Oh no, that did so much. That almost one shot the Wigglytuff, but out comes the uh, Lick Licky here. The Rock Wrecker still does a ton, a ton of damage, um, but he had already throw, thrown his own charge move at that point. So that was, it looks like it was a CMP tie. And now he comes back in with the AWAC and you know, otherwise this matchup would be ideal, but it's not anymore. GG's. All right, so game three against Hardcore. They um, they definitely have played the Mud Slap Rhyperior very well. I'm kind of shocked myself. I wouldn't have anticipated those plays or for it to do that much work. Um, this time it looks like they open up with it. So the lick damage will come out super quick. But again, remember, as we've seen, that uh, Mud Slap Rhyperior does have a rock wrecker. So I would anticipate a shield here. And they do throw the Surf, actually, instead of rock wrecker i don't even know if they had enough energy for one at that point or not but um they do not shield the earthquake that ohko's the rhyperior out comes the wiggly tough i don't think we'll be able to i was gonna say we can't reach the earthquake i take it back uh, macau literally has reached the earthquake throws the earthquake into wiggly tough which does get a shield now we can come in with the counterplay does not shield at all 
um, Play Rough or Ice Beam are going to both be resisted. They swap into their AWAC and we answer with the Shadow Ball. So, you know, again, with this matchup, you should be pretty familiar with it. They definitely want to go Shadow Ball, which it looks like they did and it landed. So um, it, it can be kind of a, a guessy matchup. It can be a little risky or at least feel a little risky sometimes because if they throw when they have enough energy for a Shadow Ball and they throw a Bone Club and you shield it, uh, that definitely gives them the energy advantage with their Alolan Marowak in that matchup. It also could be shield dependent, undercharges the Shadow Ball, which still KOs, and out comes the, uh, the Wigglytuff. So, oh, this is going to be really, really close, isn't it? Oh, no. Bone Club, okay. Oh, the double Bone Club. Does that shut it out? That should. GG's. Right, in round four here, we're matched up against Mr. L4. Okay, so again, this is round four. He's um, 3-0 and for rounds at this point in the seven round um, Paris Battle Tower. So he's playing very well. They swap in with their Probo Pass, which uh, is going to be an easy counter swap with the Medicham here. What charge move? Okay, so it looks like he has Counter, Ice Punch, and Psychic. So he does not have any super effective charge moves to throw at the Probo Pass, but it is interesting that he um, carries the Psychic. That can do a lot of work in the Rose Cup. And he throws the Psychic into the Wiggly. I would expect a shield. Okay, they do shield. And we are able to at least um, throw another Ice Punch, which I would expect them not to shield the Ice Punch. The Charm um, deletes the Medicham, but we have energy built up on this Golbat. So we're going to throw the Poison Fangs. I believe it would take two to KO at this range. We might be able to farm down. That was close. Um, that that would have been a great farm down, but they are able to reach the Ice Beam, which Macau does shield. So now they have the Scrafty in the back. So he's played very well around the Scrafty that they have in their comp. They saved a shield for it, and that's why he invested in this Golbat and definitely why he brought it correctly. So um, I was going to say if he I wouldn't shield. Okay, it is it is power up punch. I was I was trying to look maybe a little too far ahead, but I'm like if he lands the foul play that might put him in a rough spot. But it was indeed power up punch, and he does not shield. GG's game one indeed. Let's move into game two here against Mr. L4, and see how they play. Will they bring the Scrafty again and try to use it? Okay, looks like this is definitely favorable for the most part um, to Macau for the open. Now they swap into the Scrafty, so it looks like they did bring it again. This might be a foul play at this point, okay, which does not go shielded, but Medicham will deal the super effective to Scrafty because it's fighting and dark typing, so the part dark will take the super effective from the fighting type counters because fighting does not resist fighting, remember that. Um, now we're able to throw the Psychic into the Alolan Marowak, which does a decent chunk of damage. We, re <laughs> we reach a second Psychic. I didn't anticipate that. I would have anticipated maybe a, an Ice Punch, but they do shield the second one. Um, if, if this is Shadow Ball, I wouldn't shield regardless because Bone Club's not going to do much of anything to Lick Licky, and they're going to basically be forced to swap, which they do, and they also brought Probo Pass. So this Lick Licky comp and this Lick Licky strat that Mikal is using is just... It's tearing through these teams. I, th I think, I'm not exactly sure, but I think the original credit in the first time we saw Lick Licky be really successful in competitive play is thanks to uh, the one, the only, the man behind the curtain of PV Poke himself. He used um, Lick Licky at the uh, Mega Cup in Portland, which did a lot of work, especially in uh, in round one. So um, Lick Licky seeing a lot more play now at this point, which it, it basically took this game. Right, in round five here, it's uh, against Let Oz. Um, I think I'll just say Oz, but they have kind of an interesting comp, right? They have the Alola Marowak, Blaziken, uh, Gliscor, Probo Pass, Rapierior, and Grand Bull. So um, it'll be interesting to see what moves they have, especially on the Grand Bull, if we even see it in play. Uh, but they've swapped in at this point with their Gliscor. The Shadow Ball lands, that was massive. Um, at this range, you know, I probably would shield um, an Earthquake. It is an Earthquake. Okay, so that was smart shielding there. And then he should be able to... There should be a Night Slash. I would not shield. We'll see if he does or not. Does not shield the Night Slash. Now this gives him the opportunity to lick down, to build up that energy, and have Lick Licky do its thing. We, do we get a shield with the Body Slam bait? Oh, no, we don't. Feels bad. Um, they definitely should shield this Earthquake, I would imagine. Oh, they don't! No shield on the Earthquake either. So he lost the bait. And then he threw the charge. They still did not shield. So even after an unsuccessful bait with Lick Licky into the Probo Pass, 
Um, he takes it out. That was, that was crazy. Um, we get the surf thrown into the goal bat at this point. Um, that is another mud slap right parrier, so not going to be able to do much with the fast move damage realistically against a goal bat. But you know, again, just the energy efficiency with surf, and if it has rock wrecker, will be a huge massive threat. So um, looks like we shielded that surf. We don't want to give this uh, Rhyperior too much energy. We want to put on the pressure, what little pressure we can with the Bone Club, and we <laughs> we reach that Bone Club very quickly. It does KO. That's GG's. That, that, that was a good one. That was definitely a good game one here uh, for round five. That was nuts. So again here, we see him looking for this uh, Lick Licky comp, looking at their team, seeing what to go in with. He goes Lick Licky Medicham, and uh, what else do you think he would bring? Just like that, Lick Licky, Medicham, and then Golbat. Lick Licky into Probo Pass. Do they have Rock Throw? Okay, that is a Spark Probo Pass. We've seen this matchup before. I believe in, it was either round one or round two, but um, the Lick Licky, if they do not shield the Earthquake once they reach it, they're in a really tight spot. So he's definitely built up enough energy. This is a legitimate bait, and he does get the shield with the bait. So It'll be interesting to see if he shields now at this point, which he does not. They throw the rock slide and they swap. Okay, so they don't want to have to invest in the shield and risk getting baited. Um, we answer with the Medicham with which, with, you know, with this Ice Punch, even taking the super effective from the wing attack, um, can definitely just outpace the Gly score in this matchup. They throw the Night Slash, no shield like I would expect. This should be another Night Slash. I'd be surprised if we saw another shield. It looks like Mikal is basically just using the Medicham at this point to counter um, that Gly score. So at this point, you know, he's basically said it has served its purpose. It's done for. Um, I will move on. And he throws the earthquake right away into the Alolan Marowak, which does get another shield. So now it's kind of interesting at this point because he's two shields up against an Alolan Marowak and a Probal Pass. I would not shield. Okay, it is a Bone Club. I would save the shields. Definitely save the shields for the Probal Pass matchup. Um, they throw the Shadow Ball, which does land in KOs. Um, Wow, this might be tight. This might be really, really tight. Throws the rock slide. Okay, gets the shadow ball off instantly. This is, I don't think it's gonna quite KO, but it's gonna get kind of close. Oh my gosh. Oh, we tried, he tried to swap. Okay, he tried to swap. Shields another rock slide. I think he'll build up and then try, and, oh no. He just goes for the poison fang. That doesn't KO though, that does like nothing. Now he swaps into the Lick Licky. Oh, I think, I think he was in the right mindset for that. It just unfortunately did did not work out here. So in round five here, this definitely is going to be forced um, to a game three. I don't know if he would change his lineup at all. I think I think he knows. Yeah, he went in with the same lineup. I think he knows that um, he just played it. He, he didn't play it quite as well as he could have. Okay, and here we go with the final game for this round. They open up with the Grand Bull. Okay, we see that is Charm. That is not a Snarl Grand Bull. So he swaps in to answer with the Golbat and they bring out their uh, Gliscor immediately. We throw the Shadow Ball, which does go unshielded, so that was definitely what we needed at this point to um, keep up with the pacing. In a game three, they throw the Night Slash, no shield, and they throw a bait. Um, this is definitely a bait at this point. I think that's a easy to predict bait, but as you can see, even with it being resisted by the Gliscor, the Poison Fang still did quite a bit of damage, right? So I gave him the opportunity to wing attack down, but the Golbat has little to no health left at this point, and they answer with their Probo Pass. So this kind of gives him a swap advantage. Did he bring a Fighter? Yes, he did. He brought the Medicham, so I would not shield any charge moves. I would let it go through, and he's basically going to have to bring out that Grand Bull again. We throw the Ice Punch right away, so this might be a pivotal moment in this matchup. So they do shield. Now the Lick Lick is going to be able to come down and basically outpace, because it can tank um, a fair amount of charms. Okay, so shield? I, th I think we shield, yeah. So we do shield the close combat, which definitely would have uh, KO'd the Lick Licky at this range. It would be super effective. We throw the body slam. That is, that uh, should be an easy to predict bait. It does not shield just like I anticipate, but you know, at this range, it, it really doesn't matter because he still has the Medicham with the shield. So he's definitely going to save the shield. The Medicham comes back in, shields up, and he's definitely going to be able to counter down. GG's round five. Five and oh so far. Okay, so here we go with round six against uh, one of my personal favorites, the Nut93 now versus Macau. I do apologize, it's gonna be a little bit fuzzier than the previous rounds. I basically had to pull this from stream because at this point, during this uh, Paris Battle Tower, he was on stream for these final matches and these final battles. So 
It's not not gonna look as pretty, but this is, this is what we got. At least we can pull the matches and at least we can cover them, especially against the Nut and for these finals. So the Nut has the Gligar out at this point, throws the dig at the Lick Licky, which it does go unshielded. Um, the Body Slam will still, still hurt quite a bit and it's able to spam them back to back. Literally, that's why everybody calls it the Body Slam Spam, right? So it's able to lick down now. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, the Nut answers with. Did he bring his Scrafty? Oh, oh he did already. I missed that, I, I apologize. But he uh, brings in the Scrafty. We answer with the Medicham. Um, Power up punch or foul play, no shield. Medicham's gonna be kind of comfortable with that. Um, gets a, that feels like it was a little greedy um, staying in so far, but he throws the ice punch. Okay, maybe he's trying to go for double ice punch instead of just one psychic. They shield the ice punch. Now he swaps into his own goal bat. He's able to reach that shadow ball just in time to throw and um, it, it does go shield. So now the nut has no shields left. Um, I would not shield, let it go through. Uh, the Poison Fang is going to KO the Golbat, but now the Medicham can come back out, shield up, and throw the Ice Punch, which unfortunately I don't think is going to be enough to KO at this range. Oh no, he built up to the Psychic. He threw the Psychic, but the Nut, being the Nut, swapped into the Scrafty, takes that damage, and GG's. Took an L to the Nut for Game 1 here, but here we go into Game 2. Scrafty versus Lick Lick. He very not... Not ideal. Not ideal at all. So he swaps out basically instantly into his Golbat. The Nut answers with his Gligar, which throws the Night Slash no shield. And we get a, okay, Shadow Ball, not a Poison Fang bait. He's going straight for the Shadow Ball against the Nut, which goes unshielded. So that does a, a fairly decent amount of damage. We might see a shield at this point. No, we still do not see a shield used here um, from Macau. So interesting. He throws the Poison Fang, which would be resisted, but will still do, yeah. He baits with the Poison Fang, kind of, but he gets the shield at this range, though, because the Nut, I think, just wants to retain swap advantage. Um, he's used both shields, and um, Mikal still has two shields here. So two two shields versus zero shields with, like, nothing left on that Gligor, which it's gone now, and um, the Nut still has two Mons here. Okay, so Medicham, th this is pretty much GG's at this point. Um, shields the foul play, that was a good call. The Nut swaps into Golbat, throws the Psychic, unshielded Psychic, that's going to hurt a lot. Um, does massive damage to the Golbat. That, I don't know if this would be Shadow Ball at this range, this should be a Poison Fang. It was a Poison Fang, but we shield anyways. Uh, that's definitely going to be another Poison Fang, which is not going to KO. We're going to be able to counter down just by a little bit, just by a hair. And then we throw the Psychic into the Scrafty, which even though, you know, is resisted, I don't think it was the worst or the best choice at that point. It was, I mean, because we still have the Lick Licky to, to come back out here. So that is going to be GG's. The Nut took game one. Macau takes game two here. Let's let's go to game three. Oh, man. Oh, man. What do we see? The Golbat comes out into the Lick Licky. Okay, the Nut swaps basically instantly into his own Lick Licky, and Macau answers with the Medicham. Oh, no. So the Body Slam Spam is still going to hurt. Okay, Medicham still doesn't like that, and we don't have power-up punch or dynamic punch, so we don't necessarily have a good amount of shield pressure um, against the Lick Licky. So looks like we're building up. We invest a shield. We um, counter down. Okay, so that was kind of a good call, I guess, because he can throw the Psychic, which I would anticipate a shield from the Golbat at this point. Definitely, the Nut does use the shield. Now we come back out again with the Lick Licky. So this might come down to just the, the open. Is how, is how this round came down to, is just the open. Um, but we're throwing the Body Slam Spam at the Golbat. Does not go shielded, it does massive damage. And, you know, Poison Fang, I, I wouldn't shield. And Shadow Ball, definitely, you would not want to throw into a Lick Licky. So just don't shield the Poison Fangs, apparently. Now they bring out the Scrafty, we answer almost immediately. He's been so quick with his swaps and his answers. Throws in the Golbat, it, even if this is foul play, would not shield, which we don't. We're able to keep throwing these wing attacks. He throws a Poison Fang. Obviously, you would not want to go Shadow Ball into Scrafty with its part dark typing because that would be resisted. But uh, the foul play at this range might KO. If it didn't, it might have gotten pretty close to KOing and given him the opportunity to counter down. So he shuts it down. He gets the Scrafty out of there and he throws a Poison Fang bait into the Golbat, which was a successful bait. And he has the body slam for the game, dude. No way, dude. GG's. Here we go with the final. Beating out the Nut 93 in round six with a quick swap and a body slam spam. Okay. Alolan Marowak versus Wigglytuff open. Again, I'll sound repetitive, but that charm damage is basically able to 
keep up pacing in terms of the matchup with the, the fire spins coming from Alolan Marowak. So it'll still chunk away fairly quickly. You just want to go straight bone club, but it looks like he is kind of over farming just a little bit. Okay, so he dedicates to a farm down on the Wigglytuff here for game one. And it looks like Marco answers with, um, I missed it. What did, he, what, what did he throw? Okay, Probo Pass. So he threw the Shadow Ball instantly, which gets a shield. And now he's able to at least throw a Bone Club, which I would anticipate no shield. And yeah, he should come back in with the Lick Licky, which might either force a swap or he'll just play this matchup like he's done already throughout this entire tournament. And he will take advantage of that Probo Pass matchup. So, okay, they throw Rock Slide, then they swap into Machamp and he hard shuts it down with the Golbat. Um, this is not going to be in KO range for a Rock Slide, but again, Rock Slide from a Machamp will do uh, massive damage to the Golbat. So he shields anyways. He should be able to wing attack down. He does, and I would obviously at this range go for the Shadow Ball, see if it gets a shield or not. Um, regardless, I think it's a, it's GG's at this point. Purple Pass is all shields down. It's trying to farm up, but that Lick Licky, if I remember correctly, already has energy built up and... Um, is definitely going to be able to reach an Earthquake before the KO. Ooh, it might be really close. Ooh, yes! Gets the KO with the Earthquake. That is a GG's game one in round seven here. All right, game two here with uh, Macau versus, was it Marco? Marco, yes. Macau versus Marco. So they uh, open with their Probo. That looks like Spark. That does appear to be a Spark Probo. So he's not able to, you know, put on as much pressure against the Alolan Marowak matchup with the Rock Throw damage. Um, which makes it a little more playable than it would be otherwise for Macau in this lead. So he throws the Bone Club, they don't shield. He throws another Bone Club. Do they shield? Okay, so they do in shield. It looks like they want to keep that Probo Pass. So at this range, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if he comes in with the Medicham and tries to force a swap or if he just comes in with the Lick Licky to build up energy. A lot of people aren't familiar with the Lick Licky matchup. He plays it very well and he uses that to his advantage. Um, what? Okay, so they actually decide to swap and he responds by bringing his own Lick Licky shields down. At this point, the Lick Licky should be able to beat the Wigglytuff to a charge move with the Earthquake, which doesn't quite KO, unfortunately, but ooh, do we reach? I guess it wasn't a bad move on Marco's side to throw the charge move because we might have been able to reach a Body Slam and win against the Wigglytuff at this point. Uh, what does he come back in with? Okay, so he comes back in with the Golbat because they've used their energy. We can definitely farm down with Wing Attack to build up some energy. And do we see a swap? We do. Swap into the Alola Marowak, throws the Bone Club, which should KO. It does. And out comes, okay, the Charizard. Ooh, yep. This is definitely going to be forced to game three. Um, the Shadow Ball coming from the Golbat, um, I don't think is going to, it might have, but they blast burn anyway. So that's GG's. Okay, game three here. Lick Licky into Sableye, not the best, but they they instantly swap anyway. Interesting. Okay, so they swap into their Charizard, um, and we answer with the Alolan Marowak. So this, this is kind of an interesting matchup too, right? Because unlike fighting versus fighting, where that's going to be neutral, unresisted, um, fire does resist fire. So the Charizard, you know, preferably, um, save for a few special cases, just wants to go dragon claw basically just go dragon claw unless you know for sure the blast burn is going to ko whereas the dragon claw would not but for the most part just opt for dragon claw anyway so the awak goes down uh this charizard has quite a bit of energy built up and he does throw a dragon claw do we wing attack okay so that's good at least even though they kind of baited with the dragon claw they're not able to reach a blast burn and we throw the shadow ball does do they shield they don't shield, dude. The Shadow Ball lands. That does huge, massive damage. They come back in with the Wigglytuff. We throw the Earthquake. Okay, so at least they shielded the Earthquake, but at this point, they're still in a big danger, and we reach... Oh, we had it. We had another Earthquake, but the Charm deletes us before we can access it. This obviously should be an Ice Beam. We shield up, and at this range, this Golbat just needs two Poison Fangs for the KO. The Wigglytuff is not going to be able to keep up with the fast pace damage or the fast move damage pacing or reach another ice beam and he doesn't even throw the charge he wings attack he wing attacks down dedicates to the farm down then shadow balls the save will i do so congratulations to Macau there that was very impressive gameplay and very impressive performance for that 7-0 sweep in the paris battle tower and we definitely saw as well throughout the entire tournament that he was familiar 
with the matchups. He was familiar with how much damage he's going to take from what charge moves. We see yet again a tournament sweep from what very well may be another Kid Prodigy in Pokemon Go PvP. And I don't know about you battlers and girls that PvP, but Macau, congratulations again. You have definitely earned my respect and my admiration for that amazing performance. So be sure to throw a congrats and a, a GG's into the comments below for Macau and also leave a like on the video, it does help a lot. So subscribe if you feel the Ghost Stadium vibe and power up punch the notification bell for all the Ghost Stadium PVP content. That is it for this video. We will see you in the next video. Battlers, have a good stinking day.